Welcome to episode 25 of Under the Holo Table. I am the Inquisitor. Welcome. A Holo Table news network podcast covering in depth analysis, mods, tips, and the hottest topics from the outer rim. I am Voxen. And joining me today, the Princess Leia to my Obi Wan Kenobi, Celiac Sarah. Hey, how are you? Doing great. Glad to see a boy, Sarah, three weeks in a row. I don't know, I know. how you do it. This is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> doing good you're doing good uh and uh wait this can't be right I, I know i checked all the doors sarah did you leave a window open uh it's everyone's favorite sassy goh uncle pico burrito hello thanks for having me back and uh much like bruce lee tonight my form will be completely formless <laughs> like water Yeah. Uh, Well, the bad news is I wasn't able to put together the episode that I had planned, but the great news is that Pico is here and we are just going to talk about whatever floats our sail barge. We, uh, much like we are just going to float like water. So um, yeah, we're just going to kind of pick a couple things and jump in and um, talk about the game. Uh, It's kind of interesting. I thought last week we did this extensive Datacron discussion and then, of course, the set two, you know, yeah, like abilities came out and like kind of changed some opinions. I was like, oh my god, like this is so crazy, overpowered and stuff. So anyway, we're gonna get into that a little bit more. It's just so funny that uh, we did that long discussion. It's like, oh boy, I wish I had seen the set two abilities, you know, and things like before, so we could have discussed that, include that. But it's great, it, we get to discuss that on this show. But um, I thought we could lead off. Uh, this episode would be a little bit fun to pair with our last HNN because we kind of covered kits and uh, some things that were coming out and just the general news. And now we kind of get to talk about, you know, some of those things in game, like mm-hmm. Dar- um, the Grand Inquisitor is here. And, uh, you know, people may be getting him like Pico and uh, experiencing him and using him in assault battles and all over the place. And uh, yeah, Pico, I am ready for some saucy takes on the Grand Inquisitor. So is the Grand Inquisitor really in the game? I mean, <laughs> if, 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 you, if you can't do anything with the character, is, right. is he really there? Good, good. Unleash your anger. <laughs> That's right. Um, look, and, and Sarah has, has been listening to me talk about this team for the past, I don't know, it feels like six months because they've been available for so long. And what, even I, was, episode- I was hot. You and I talked about it. We were really excited about him coming and had high (laughs) hopes for the kit and uh, everything that he was going to, you know, do for the faction. And and I kept, you know, I kind of kept with this, like, everybody just wait, everybody just wait. And Mm -hmm. well, I waited. um, And then I dumped all of the resources into them. I I mean, they are now um, R9, ninth sister. Uh, It is an R8 uh, Grand Inquisitor. Everyone else is R7. Um, at one point uh, today, until I decided to dismantle their mods, they all were, you know, mod sets over 135 to 150. I mean, I was wow. pushing a, a number of them up over 340 speed. Right. And I don't like being negative. I, I don't. Mm-hmm. But that's how we're starting this show. <laughs> they, they, they missed. It, they, they, there's, yeah. there's no other way to describe it. And, and, and look, I, I, am, I am frustrated beyond belief. And, and, and here's what I, I want to level set with this. And I assume um, you gave uh, GI the three Omicrons as well. All three, all three Omicron, yeah, right, Omicrons. Right, so, I mean, and, and you've I like built full the, invested, right? And I built the, the, the second sister Datacron as well. Right. So and you had I, to, I have put okay. They the even have the Datacron. Yeah. They've got they, all the resources to make them as good as possible. And you, and that's the thing too, is like, not only like, do you have to have invested the Omicron and gotten the Datacron, you also need like their top tier mods yes. to be a viable mm-hmm. team. And yeah. even then it sounds like you're struggling. So you're, pivoting a little bit on, and it, uh, it, yeah, yeah the, and it's not even struggling so what i want to use as a comparison for this is i want to look at the mara jade star killer juhani mm-hmm. three omni team okay that's a three omni investment there and it's the same relic levels and all those other pieces and it was a lot of effort to build star killer and i'm, I'm going to put aside the the farming aspect of it. And, but, but I just want to talk about the investment of those two teams. So if, if I put three Omnis on that team, I essentially have the equivalent of a galactic legend capable or galactic legend killing team in 
Grand Arena, as well as Territory Wars. I spread that across two different PvP modes. Now, it's not a great team in PvE, although I did some really interesting stuff uh, in Conquest. I got to go back and look what it was, but it was, I was kind of blown away by what that looks like. Now, on the flip side of it, we know that this is designed to be a Territory Wars team for the, grant, for the Inquisitors. So I expect some good stuff out of them in, in Grand Arena, but I wasn't expecting, and, and again, if, if CG says you're not supposed to be able to take out Kenobi with Cat, you can't take out Kenobi with Cat. That, that's a bigger problem dealing with Cat in the one term insta kill, turn insta kill <laughs> right now. Like, I don't know how they're going to fix that problem. But I dump all those resources in, I go into Arena, and I have figured out how to kill Kenobi with this team. That second sister ability, I got it working. I'm really excited. I think I can make this work. Then we get into territory wars and it doesn't work any longer. And it doesn't work for a couple of reasons. There's some, again, some weird learning some of the mechanics around. Um, again, I, I made this mistake. I think someone else that was formerly in, in uh, old dirty blasters did as well, but uh, the, the insta turn that he gets when you get six stacks on someone for the first time, it only works against Jedi. So if you mm -hmm. burn Kenobi through like I did, this other time and then now you're trying to chip away at cat and all of a sudden cat gets six stacks of purge on her well guess what she doesn't get the insta kill ability because mm. or on her because she's not a jedi right well, again it, it's a dumb mistake on my fault my, on my part but oh how do we start slowing down this team well we insert non-jedis onto it but more importantly the bigger piece is you absolutely can stop that second sister counter with one simple move when a galactic republic uh uh character uses a special ability it stuns the target so that's a datacron and that's a level three or level six data i think cron. that's I forget the six. Which one. yeah so yeah. It's, a, it's a level six datacron or three ranks below the datacron i need to be able to take out kenobi in that case yeah first turn kenobi targets grand inquisitor stuns him and the whole thing breaks apart right there right you can't get any turns from that standpoint so Again, I think datacrons are exciting. I think there's a lot of interesting things that you can do from that standpoint. But what we're left with is a team that is designed to be Jedi killers, that the only Jedi teams that it can beat are gas, which is great. And again, having a, having a, a powerful gas counter that's not gas is great uh, from that side, mm -hmm. or like shock T clones. But it can't take anything else out. I ran into a, a Jedi Master Luke in territory wars and never got through his protection wow i mean th th think about that like that was like everyone's like oh well you know no one will ever set that so i, I saw it and i'm like no i'm going to go after it. but that team you can't clear the permanent taunt and you can't insta kill so that omnicron is invalid on a jedi master luke led team hmm. so it's it's this I, i'm incredibly frustrated and look when you're going to be the tip of the spear sometimes you fall short and, and i get that but um, I don't know what this team does well. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's ultimately what, the, what this keeps coming back to is if, if I ended up with a three Omni team that beats gas, that's garbage. I mean, it doesn't that, need that's, your that's great just mods. garbage. That's why no. you kind of took them down. Yeah, because if that's yeah. what you're using it for, mm -hmm. they don't need 130 speed. It, and, and the way that it works is you need to, for the, the gas counter to work, you need second sister i'm sorry seventh sister the heel sister mm -hmm. to go first she mm -hmm. drains turn meter off of gas and then you just go to town you burn him through through his protection mm -hmm. and then you can take out the rest of the you know they'll, they'll do enough damage they'll rip through you know the, the rest of the clones pretty easy and, and once you get him down you can control him via tm through the fight and again it's nice to have that in grand arena but I don't know what I'm going to use this team for in territory wars and all the omnis are in territory wars. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I just, it, it's, um, well, and that's not why you it, invested in the team. You didn't invest in the team for a gas counter. You know, you didn't take your ninth yeah. sister at a relic nine for a gas counter, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really thought that, it, you know, it's the same old CG says you, you shouldn't be able to do this. And then we find a way. Yes. Well, what we weren't counting on, or datacrons yeah. mm -hmm. inserting a level of complexity into that. And, and it's, it's um, it, it, this is why I like datacrons. Cause I think that there's some things that people are going to be able to do that are going to offset a lot of pieces. But um, 
I, I just, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do from that, that standpoint. Now they're fun in conquest. Uh, you know, now that mm. y- you get a, you get a VA and three AA um, and I know they're not called mods and, and Sarah, I was asking oh. all these questions today <laughs> and I, and I couldn't think of the actual word, so I didn't use it, but, but you kind of get that set up um, and you know, Grand Inquisitors on his first when at the start of the battle, everybody gets a stack of purge. So now all the enemies are red across the board. You ro- throw one AE and everybody dies. Like it's it's mm-hmm. Lord Vader easy, kind of marching through on conquest from that side. And again, it's nice to have a team that can always clear a mm-hmm. territory for the for the most part. They again, interestingly enough, they can't handle gas in conquest, but they can handle in, in other game modes. Um, <laughs> The, the reflective damage it's is reflective. Oh, that kills them. Yeah. 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 You know, think about all the damage that Grand Inquisitor does across the board to everybody in that turn. Well, he's now in the red. If you don't yeah. get a first turn that, that it goes from that side. Um, the assault battle was a lot of fun. Um, I did it once. I don't ever have to do it again. Um, yeah. CT3. It, so, yeah. I kind of want to talk a little bit about your strategy on that too, getting through CT3. Um, yep. Obviously, I'll put out a video today on it and he wasn't able to clear it, but uh, I haven't seen, and I'm sure there will be several people who put out strategy videos, exactly yeah. how to execute it and pull it off. Um, but I haven't seen any of those yet today, but I, I was definitely going to take a look. Um, so yeah, yeah. how did, how were you able to pull it off? So, so a couple of pieces. And I, I think part of it is the R9 sister helped because mm-hmm. what ends up happening with that team is, the first time someone targets someone that's not the ninth sister, she taunts and then she never loses taunt. So you, mm-hmm. she just needs to be able to take a beating the, the entire time. And there, so there's right. a couple of pieces that um, you need to manage. The first is uh, it's, I used Grand Inquisitor, seventh, ninth, fifth, and second sister. I tried yeah. it with eighth and eighth fell short. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of where I figured it out. And, how I pulled it off was stacking the event mm-hmm. special on second sister. So and I ended up with as her. As many as you get end. on second sister, right? She had 18 at, okay. by, by the end. That makes sense. By the end of the fight. Yeah. He and was it spreading when, around when, too much. Yeah. And, and it makes sense to spread it around. And at one point I had tried getting it on um, the seventh sister because she's always assisting. Mm. But but the reality is, is you, and, and where it comes down to is there's a sequence that you've got to, you've got to work out in wave five that yeah. that kills shakti as fast as possible and to do that i was gonna say because you gotta you need to shakti hit for 500 first, right okay. yeah so it was it was working on stacking that up the entire way through um the other piece that i started doing and i, I think this is actually kind of the secret to it is um like if you think back to the bounty hunter event you know i always when i went through the bounty hunter uh, you know rebel roundup with, with the bounty hunters I always held on to the event special until I knew that I was going to, I was going to be able to take somebody out. So you could build the stacks up. I use the event special every opportunity that it was up because it reduces the cooldowns of all the other pieces. You have to what, spam it. Yeah. So what happens is with seventh sister, she's got the TM drain and then she's got the heal. If you rotate special or I usually do TM drain heal special TM drain heal special. And you can do that three turns in a row. And she gets mm-hmm. a lot of turn meter because of the, because of patience. So even if I didn't need to heal anyone, I threw the heal out because then everyone gets foresight and then it blocks damage that comes in for, from a little bit from that side. So the, her whole piece was just keep that heal turning over and over and over again. The TM drain worked a little bit. The bigger piece in the TM drain is it stripped off. It strips off taunt, which are a couple of places you need to run into that. Um, and I think it's got an ability block with it, but the first four waves are just building up stacks and kind of get to where you need to it. And, and I killing think your I was time. At, yeah, <laughs> it takes yeah, like, like 20 to 30 minutes to get to sector five. It, it took me an hour to get through the whole event. Oh right. my an hour gosh. Through the whole yeah. Thing. yeah. And that's why it's like, yeah, it better be similar. Yeah. No one's spending an hour on that yeah. time. Oh my God. So you get up to five and, and I would say I could probably cut, 10 to 15 minutes out of the run because I went after Yoda first mm. because Yoda's got the, you know, he powers everybody up with that, that buff that's on him. And I, I just realized after a period of time that you can't burn him down fast enough. Okay. Uh, so as soon as I switched over to focusing down Shakti and it, it, it took a lot of time to, to kind of get that because part of it is you're dealing with heals that are coming off of other characters. You're not doing as much damage, but, um, once I 
got shock T out of the way, everyone else on that wave just, just fell down. And, and really what ends up happening is, especially as purge kind of gets out on the board, no one can do enough damage to really take you out. The only mm -hmm. time I mm -hmm. got my ninth sister was out of protection was on the fifth wave. And I think she got down to like 75% health at one point, mm -hmm. but I was able to get things back under control with ability blocks and some of those other pieces. And then it was, it was over at that point. Um, and then really for the rest of it, you kind of run right through it. The, the pieces that I, I found interesting, and I didn't remember this from when I got through CT2 and I, and I would do the same. If you, if you can't beat CT2, I would do something very similar in that case. Um, I don't think the grand inquisitor really provides anything magical, you know, for CT3, I think that he ups the damage on the team a little bit that, that helps from that side. And the health um, equalization, I think. I mean, yeah, I guess you weren't running yeah. into it too much. Yeah, it sounds like you're able to keep them healthy, but. Yeah. Um, you know, my second sister was at 12,000 special damage. So, you know, you add 18 mm -hmm. stacks onto that. She's at like 22, 23,000 special, you know, special damage at that point. Um, but Cat doesn't do her insta-kill move on her wave, which I thought was interesting because uh, mm. I was panicked about that. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Like yeah. the whole time you're just like, when's it <laughs> yeah. coming? When's it coming? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, I took out Maul first on the Maul wave. Okay. Um, again, because I was worried about him ripping off five hits and I, I basically kept him stun locked until he was gone. Um, I really want quick one to ask about yeah. well, that wave five. Did you find that you had to jump around a little bit in terms of like managing GMY to like not spam stuff or remove his TM? You could just like focus no. completely on Shakti. Yeah. And, and as I say okay. this, that, that there's not anything to, to worry about. The first special for Grand Inquisitor is an AE ability block. So that slows him down. That slow, oh, okay. slows down uh, Grandmaster Yoda a little bit from that side. Um, the only time that I would have to kind of pull off of the target is, and, and I, I don't know where it was coming from, but a taunt would randomly show up on a non taunt. Like at one point Shakti got taunt. I, I don't, I don't mm. know how that happened. I don't know if it's, it's part of an eventability or something. Um, frankly, mm. you turn enough turns over with seven sister that she's pulling off taunt when it, when it shows up, it, it really doesn't hurt you from that side. Um, but really once you get Shakti ability blocked, you know, is your passing stuns through that as well? Uh, you know, if, if you can get six stacks and, and kind of get the big critical hit piece coming off of seven, or, uh, second sister, it she really kind of just turns through you know, quickly as in five minutes probably to get through that. And then it kind of just all falls apart. Um, yeah. And then surprisingly, Kanan was the last character that I took out on the last wave. And he, I just turned it on auto. Mm -hmm. and, and what, I, so... <laughs> The, the story behind it is I, I had a, I had a, my daughter was in a, was in a camp uh, this morning and I, I thought I had a good system in place and, and she, I had to drop her off in 20 minutes. So I was 15 minutes into this run and I was stacked up at like 10 or 11 and I'm like, all right. So I had my tablet sitting on the front seat with me. And as well, I'm dropping her off, I'm just tapping the screen to keep it from going to sleep. And then I dropped her out, you know, ran her in, dropped her off. And I pulled over to the parking lot of the school. And I sat there for 45 minutes and finished the rest of this sitting in the car. And, and I finally got to the point. It was just, it was just Kanan left. And I'm like, all right, I got to get home. And I just turned on auto and I drove home at that point. Well, well, they finished it, right. but, um, oh my God. but I don't have to do it anymore. Like that, that's, right. that's the, you know, and the blessing you know, and I, the curse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the curse and the blessing, <laughs> I guess. It, it, and this is where, look, I'll complain about the, about the inquisitors. And again, I'm, they, they can't even clear wave four in, in dark side territory battles. And, and I'm fairly oh, good. Yeah. Could, yeah. Experience with that, yeah. of course. Right. Cause I'm sure yeah. a lot of people were trying the yeah. dark side TB and I saw them being successful. I think yeah, through wave three, but I wasn't sure if they'd be able to do anything yeah. in four. And then four, they get punched in the mouth and, you know, shaken and thrown around the room. And I think yeah, I got just about two waves with it. So. Damage and TM yeah. I assume. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's the, when you have a tank that never gets rid of taunt, mm -hmm. And yeah. you can't stop the the counters. It's it's over at that point. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the the ways I look at this, and I was I was kind of talking to someone in our in our alliance about this, and I don't think they could wrap their head around it. So I dumped all these resources into the Inquisitors. I now will sim over the next twelve months. I will sim more relic material 
mm-hmm. with that team that I put into the team moving forward. Right. So there will That's be good. a longer term payoff around it, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I, I really am. Yeah. Um, I was, um, I was thinking about this cause you were, you were posting in our guild shot. I think it was during territory wars about, about the inquisitors. And I was just reading what you were saying just about like them, not yeah. like it, it's not a good payoff. If, if you get a gas killer or a shock clone yeah. killer, like it's not, it's not a, an even trade really. Um, and I just had like this thought in my head I was like, man, you know, like for me, I was like, I know that it is like exactly what you're saying when it's you saying it, because it, yeah. like you, those whole time you've been like, let's just kind of wait and see what happens. Like the sky's not falling. They're missing a piece. The grand inquisitor is going to give us that piece, like for the team and this whole thing. So uh, to, to see it laid out like that, I was like, okay, like this is not like people are not overreacting about him being a garbage can (laughs) (laughs) you know a garbage inquisitor (laughs) yeah Yeah. when when characters are released into the the game or or teams are released into the game i I always look at it as like what what is the intention of this team and i don't think that's defined right now like there, there are you know I know we're going to talk a little bit about Radis. We'll talk a little bit around Sorty because I, I think there's some awesome things that are going on there. And, and frankly, I got a little bit of a, I'm really concerned about Malgus now with what I, what we're seeing with the Grand Inquisitor. Ooh. That Malgus is now going to break up a really good team. So I, I don't, I don't get a new team out of it. I'm, I'm actually robbing my, my Sith Empire team. What does this solve for me outside of another defensive team that I, that I put out there? Uh, so it, it, it'll, it'll be interesting now, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people that think that we're probably getting a Jedi as the next conquest character, um, or at least some of us kind of think that, the, you know, the, the other side of Malgus in, in the, the Knights of the Old Republic, um, I'd be shocked to find out that, you know, CG is going to put a conquest character out. That's going to get owned by the last legendary character that was just released. That kind of seems backwards for them. They tend to give you a problem and then bring in the solution. Mm-hmm, this right. is they're giving you a solution and, and the problem coming in the future. So I, I just right now they're just I, giving I us more problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. 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 Um, I, I think it's a little interesting too that it's unfortunate that well one that we had high hopes for them i know that they you know a lot of people are putting them on defense in grand arena which can give some people troubles because they are so tanky right uh granted there are counters for them but uh they do seem to be a stubborn annoyance in grand arena on defense um so a little bit of credibility there but you know it's a little sad that their rollout has also tail ended with datacrons Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, even right now, as you're saying, you know, the one thing that's shutting them down from your counter is really the Datacron, even though they have a Datacron. Yeah. And that's the thing is that you really want like, okay, if we're introducing like the unbalanced Datacron, you expect the opposite an opposite unbalanced yeah. datacron to be able to counter it, but that's not necessarily the case here. And then we're still like so early on because we're just in like our first cycle, you know, and, you know, once we're probably like six to nine months, you know, maybe a yeah. year down of datacrons. Cause right now it just, we have no relative like experience outside of like what is happening right now with, you know, the three month cycle and what they will be like down the road or what other teams will be overpowered or underpowered, you know, mm-hmm. based on data crons. Um, and so it's, and it's hard with the recency bias to yeah. not, you know, be able to, you know, you really got to look at the forest uh, on the trees <clears throat> outside of the trees on this with the data crons, because right now, yeah, really it's, it's hard to not just say like now, now, you, I mean, I think it, you're hundred percent right now is awful in this scenario, yeah. but mm-hmm. also temporary. Right. So, um, but I, th- I think there's a lot of merits to what you're saying, just in terms of the letdown we, uh, you know, yeah. we, we were both, I think disappointed with their state 
as it was as the rollout was happening, but optimistic about their potential and like trying to put on that happy face, like, hey, like, let's give them a chance and see what happens. And uh, yeah, and at this point, you know, it, it they, as you said, they didn't hit the mark. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've heard some people say that, no, the answer is going to be Reva. They're going to release Reva and that's going to fix the problem. Mm. I, I'm sorry, but that's a bridge too I far. I don't accept that. No, you know, no, I, no. I already have one too many on the team. And, and again, what's coming to, what's basically what it's looking like. Cause I, I think my take was it was going to be eighth was going to kind of fall into the, the, the extra spot and, and second sister was there to have an awesome ship. Well, the reality is second sister is actually turning out to be the great character in that, in, on that team. Well, there's so much yeah. crit damage and she's yeah. the crit damage person. So yeah. it's like, it, yeah, she's got to be in there. So now it's just the eighth brother is this character that I had to farm. And, and again, I, I don't like that when, when that happens. It's a, a, you know, who, who would have thought that, that the upside for the inquisitors was going to be the second sister in her ship. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like that, that, that's the crazy part to me is that, is mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I looked at him like the, the ship's great, but that team is going to be phenomenal. And then it's like, no, 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 the ship's great. And the rest of it are really great for deploying into territory battles to, <laughs> to get ours to our next star. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you would, I, I would think you were crazy if you told me the legendary tune isn't the one that's going to make this team yeah. viable. No, it's like yeah. another marquee, the seventh marquee like tune for this yeah. team like down the road. No, no, no. Like that, you're giving me a sixth tune that's a legendary. Uh, they, my expectations, that's the one that yeah. you, you know, it, there, it, there is no like next tune, you know. And to your point, you know, we're going to lose those datacrons, which I think we're going to lose those datacrons in 30 days. Oh, the first one. Uh, I, I'll be honest. Because didn't, I, I th- didn't they say that was like a the exhibition? Yeah. E- exhibition, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I I think if you go back and take a look, and I want to do it before this, I, I think mm-hmm. they're only going to be a 60 day cycle because they want to get to the destruction piece earlier to get those dumped into everyone. So mm-hmm. regardless, whether it's 30 days or 60 days, when those when that Omicron that that st- that Kenobi can stun on turn falls off well so does the second sister one and, and, right. and that yeah. whole counter is built on the ability of i can get like three turns with second sister every time that it turns around so i'm just back to square one right you know right. There, there's there's no there's no fixing that and and i i think you know sarah when i when i kind of blew up about the and i don't think i even blew up i mean not I really logically kind of stepped through it but but when I couldn't beat Jedi Master Luke. What I took that as is under certain circumstances, we can you can beat a galactic legend. Well, which galactic legend can I beat? Because mm-hmm. the two Jedi teams, I can't. I, I can't I can't punch through that. So I, I need to know what the answer is. And and I well so and I'm really glad that you tried it against Jedi Master Luke because I know a lot of people were mad that they were like oh like asterix you can't do it if you can't beat the galactic legend jedi if they're with their conquest counterpart they're like whatever the term was character lifter lifter Lifter, Lifter, thank you and i went back and i found the original post when they were talking about grand inquisitor and they never specifically said which galactic legend you would be they just said galactic legend jedi so i was like okay well maybe it's luke like that's there's no lifter character on that team so the fact that you can't even do it there with a fully invested team that has more than the um required levels that you need for the event all the omicrons the datacron the the top mods then then what galactic exactly what you said what galactic yeah. legend is it <laughs> and and look it, it was the titan team night luke was there uh gas was there i don't remember who else was there at that point but again you throw an ae and all of a sudden you know Sk- general skywalker hits reduces turn re- reduces cooldowns hits reduces cooldowns hits reduces cooldowns and all of a sudden i'm like oh now i'm basicing now i can't land purge to actually do anything from, from that side so yeah that team does nothing without its specials yeah yeah 
Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm just left and right, they've shot themselves in the foot with this team. I mean, that, you, you imagine that they roll out Datacrons and they roll out Grand Inquisitors and they don't give yeah. Datacrons, they give bonuses to Jedi. Well, great. Yeah. Well, now you've got a good Inquisitor team that people are excited <laughs> yeah. with their Datacrons yeah. because they're punching up with a Datacron on Jedi teams, right? And, and so yeah, I, I think people the community would be pretty excited about both <laughs> yeah. as, you know both parties there the data crowns and inquisitors and, and to somewhat change the topic a little bit mm. um the bigger piece that i've been that i has been kind of gnawing on me through this is i think cg have have painted themselves into a corner with commander ahsoka because mm-hmm. i mean it, think about what they had to build into Maul's kit to prevent her from taking someone out on the first turn. If you lose someone on your first turn with it, with that team, it's over. So it had to be Maul's kit had to be, if Kenobi is there, he automatically gets five stacks. And if he gets five stacks of this thing that takes time to build, you can ignore taunt, but only under that circumstance. So I've got to have five stacks of, I don't know, pissy. I forget what that ability is called. But I, I I can ignore taunt and I can re, or I can reset cooldowns in that case, and mm-hmm. then so they put this piece in that under this very specific circumstance you can do it on the first turn. Otherwise, it takes five turns to build up. the 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 ticking time bomb for for Commander Tano on her first turn. I don't know how they're going to fix that moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she's just so she's so strong. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. even in, I mean, even in, even under a pad, Padme lead, like even not under Kenobi, even when you have to wait the eight turns for her yeah. to have that ability off cooldown, like she's still really strong. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's great in conquest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's yeah. so good in conquest. I don't use her because I keep her around because I might run into a gas team and then I just I, yeah. her in oh, and I right. take that out and I just run or, right through it. So. Or even a Padme team. Break her yeah. for a gas team for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, so with uh, the assault battles this time around, I got to do tier two. I now have uh, oh. the final two on six stars. So that was kind of exciting for me today, um, getting to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear about the uh, uh, CT3. So um, that it's doable, one. Yeah, I was yeah. going to be real upset it wasn't doable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, too little sad takes an hour. And then I may Pico, do you think it could be done with uh, all R5? I mean, I'm sure someone out there is uh, will have a guide for all doing it with all R5. So I, I forget someone in one of the Discord channels I was mm. trying to help get through it with an R7 sister, yeah. and she was just getting chewed through. Mm. Uh, pardon me, R9 sister, she was getting chewed through yeah. on, on that. Now, I think uh, crit avoidance arrow a ton of protection like mm-hmm. you're gonna have i love hot hot utils but i'm not sure that hot utils is gonna put a mod set on her at mm-hmm. seven at at, at at r7 that is gonna have her in a position to be successful um mm-hmm. i think that you're gonna have to get very very specific and, and honestly she doesn't need turns like it's one of those cases like if you could if you could build a 90 speed set with just insane protection and, and health, um, I, I think that she could, you, you might be able to pull it off, but I think a crit avoidance arrow is going to be pretty critical to that because while they have some, um, some crit avoidance in the kit, I, I just think that you just need to, to prevent as much of those crit hits as possible because again, you, you've got cam in there and every once in a while cam just decides like you're going to die. And, and mm-hmm. that, you know that follows her pretty quick from that side but um i I think it's going to probably take now again i am as we just spent i don't know 30 minutes explaining i am not a a theory crafter as much as i hate that term you know i couldn't build a team for this there are some smart folks that'll figure this out and i i'm sure that we'll see something on it pretty quick but um i even think just getting through ct2 especially getting through ct2 early in the process Mm-hmm. you're going to earn all those resources back like that that's mm-hmm. the biggest thing is that that's you know, why i'm going so hard for the yeah. inquisitors like even 
cubs today like on their rogue action was like are they motivating anyone to get inquisitors with all of these um galactic challenges and the assault battles and it's like yes they are totally yeah. motivating me to like <laughs> gear the inquisitors yeah. hard because i want all those resources and that's a really great way to look at it because a lot of people look at it like oh well i'm only going to use it for that like that's not a reason to get it i can't use it in grand arena or territory battle or whatever but if you look at it as a way for you to earn resources back yeah. that's a way better way to handle yeah. it i think yeah and, i guess they will I, at least pay pay them pay for themselves in the long run and, and i think i saw somewhere and, and and i didn't pay attention to it because i was trying to make them a valid team but you know i'm really wondering all right so you take lord vader you take ninth you take grand inquisitor you take second and, and seventh under a lord vader team i wonder what that starts to look like now again I dropped three Omnicrons on a character that's a leader that I'm not going to put in a leader spot anymore. But does that then make a bunch of other characters available to use in other places you know, and kind of build up that, that Lord Vader team? But I thought I saw someone that used those characters to turn Lord Vader into a pretty powerful, impressive thing. Like it might've been Arnold. I'm, I'm not sure um, where, I, where I saw that, but uh, you know, now we're saying this and then you guys are going to have me on in, I don't know, three or four months, you know, the next time you can't get another guest, I, I, I get why I'm here, but <laughs> and, and we're going to have figured out something to use these guys for. And it's, this mm-hmm. is going to be like the worst hot take that anyone has ever had. Like, Hey, remember that time where Pico was like, Oh, these guys are trash, they're garbage. And then they're better. Like, that's why I won't tell someone don't spend the time to farm them. I, th- I think there, there's value in getting there, but I just don't think we have the answer yet. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. If anything, they are a great team to chew 30 to 40% stamina working your way through zones in nice. conquest. And, and <laughs> again, like, but that stuff matters. Like it, it does, you know, you know, like sometimes I just need to three star these next three fights to keep moving further down the board and, and having some of those teams available, uh, mm-hmm. especially when they're not, you know, we're going to get out of this conquest and, and we're not going to have any more purge feats. They don't do anything really well enough that it's like, oh, I need to hold, I need to hold this character back because I need 50 stamp, you know, staggers or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're just going to be a workhorse team to kind of chew through some of those pieces. And I, I think there's value in some of that as well. So, well, and it's, it's funny because now with the Datacron node in conquest, the nodes, I should say, and it's kind of changing like how I'm planning my conquest and even like playing on Saris. All we were talking cool. about using one refresh specifically just on the data cron yeah. node and him and I were going to take turns on just in terms of like who can get to it that day. And, and I was, I was telling him, I was like, I have to use specific teams when you do that, because I'm managing your roster so particularly yeah. to push forward through the sectors that, Efficiently, that you have the exactly. extra energy to do it. On the, exactly. You know. So I'm like, if you burn like your Kenobi team down, you're going to screw me in the morning. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it, and it's, it's a good thing when you, when you have a team that can be burned down and well, also and push your way forward. That That's a, it's an interesting idea there because you know, if I have to go back to sector two and work on feats mm-hmm. and I two star something, well, that's typically the first place that I'm going to go try and earn those banners back and kind of pick all of those pieces up. Well, now I don't want to wait that, that 20 energy that I have to go back through and three star something actually represents nine Mark one data cron pieces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm really being able to, to three star all the way through, notes. yeah, are, are really mm-hmm. critical, especially if you have if you're a little razor thin and kind of getting to the to the end point in, in mm-hmm. the uh, in conquest. Yeah, I made it through sector one, not dropping one, and then I think I like dropped three in sector two. I'm like, oh, that's too many. I got to yeah. tighten it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah there's great. no there's no funny business happening. No no getting yeah. cute and being like, I think this game will yeah. work. Well, I, at least the good news here is that hopefully the Inquisitor nightmare is over and we'll be moving on to the next thing, right? The next <laughs> yeah. disappointment, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so you, we'll get like the next team or the next thing that they'll push, that they'll design all of the galactic challenges around and, you know, push something else or, you know, hope, hopefully, I guess it'll be tunes for a GL at some point. It's so funny because like we're so conditioned 
you know, through six GLs to be like, oh, this new marquee is going to be a requirement yeah. for the yeah. GL. And we haven't seen that now in like, you know, months, you know, so it's just like, I don't, you know, that was like, you know, Shorty's a great example because it's just like, oh, are we going, I mean, I know we're going the capital ship direction for Rebels, but, you know, I really thought, oh, she's going to be a marquee requirement for yeah. GL because we're going to go over public, you know, but, and so like, I don't, I don't know. I'm so confused now. Like, I don't know whether I yeah. should be rushing her farm <laughs> or not, you know, cause it's like, I've, I've rushed all the others and those didn't pan out to be anything. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. It's funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe this is be a good time to transition. Yeah. We want to talk about shorty a little bit, like go, go to something enjoyable oh. and lighthearted. I love her. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, tell us about your new love. I, I, I got her to, uh, got her to, to relics, um, for the last round of GAC. And mm-hmm. she was a back wall defensive team and didn't do anything. And, and uh, you know, and I, I kind of, I put her, I put it back there and I put a, a G11 Radis back there just to see what would happen. And I actually got somebody to give me a little bit of feedback on it. Oh, I don't cool. think she's a bad defensive GAC team, but I think that she's a filler and, and that's, yeah P- P- pico's view we are we're I, I think in october we're going to get another increase in the number of teams in, in gac and i think that's going to be really critical in that point that she's just a, a filler spot back there um what's well, funny because even watching the teams that counter her you can like burn down the whole team and then you like have to put it on auto yeah. or you might time out like three yeah. minutes is barely enough time to just kill her she is so yeah. tanky so I, um, I just took, took it on a whim and, and all of a sudden now I'm starting to think through all of these boxes that she checks in Conquest. I do not have the Omni. Like I, I want to make that perfectly clear. I don't have the Omni in Conquest. Mm. She is an automatic win through 40% stamina across the board. Mm. So I used Shorty, BB-8, and the whole thing revolves around BB-8 because it's the 8% turn or the 8% Turn meter speed, I forget which one it is. Turn meter. Yeah, yeah which turn puts meter. Her in so like the 700s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Puts speed. her all the way up there. Yeah. Um, so shorty, BB8. Um, and then I use like chopper. I think I used R2. And oh. I, I used all light side. It, it oh, was yeah. all light side. So basically, it, it's they were all light side. They were non attackers. And T3M4 mm-hmm. was, was the other one. So non attackers. Right. Okay. Uh, this is a great team. So you run everything up, you get all of these bonus stats because of what happens. And then you put a VA and a couple of, you know, uh, amplified agonies on her and she goes first and she takes one turn and she throws the cards out and everybody dies. Yeah. Uh, And it just (laughs) happens. I I mean, there's a, there's a video on the, on the UTH discord on this, that literally one turn, everybody actually, that was the one that she was at 54% stamina and one person was standing at the end of it. And then R2 walked over and kind of poked him and he, and he fell over. Um, and you just, you it. just run through it. Uh, and she just blows everything up. And she's so fat. Like I, w- I was going against um, overpowered four teams oh, wow. with, with like 50% stamina and she was still going first. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she, so, yeah, she's like in the seven yeah, hundreds, yeah. like seven fifties, like with that BBA boost, it's insane. Yeah. 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 Let alone the fact, like if you put like the light side data cron, like on that team yeah. at some point, yeah. she gets into like the thousands or something. It's crazy. And, right, not and thousands, what, like what I appreciate about, about her kit is, as well as Radis is they've got some built-in conditions to make them faster. Mm-hmm. So I don't need 150 speed set we're in a speed meta right now i don't need 150 speed on her i can get her up to to 370 380 Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. decent mods and that allows again it it pulls a bunch of utility out of a bunch of characters that that were there now when i run her in grand arena i put ig 88 Mm -hmm. with her t3m4 yeah and t3m4 and um it's basically the Grievous BBA. Nuke team, which yeah, everyone yeah. had so mm-hmm. much fun with. And it's yeah. great to have like a dedicated non-Grievous, you know, putting that together. Yep. And, and then uh, someone else in Old Dirty Blaster said that they actually are with putting her with Jedi Knight Revan, even at gear 11, mm-hmm. allows them to run two Old Republic teams in Conquest. So you cut that 
10 day, you know, farm for that, for that feet down to, to 20 days, which is, which is really nice from that side as well. So, or I'm sorry, five days, five days yeah. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, but, but a ton of fun to, to, to use her in conquest. Yeah, that's great. So. I'm still wondering because um, I haven't really seen, but I'm, uh, I need to look for like what, you, because there's of course more Rogue One than yep. you know the five tunes mm-hmm. or you know the, for four tunes to pair with Radis. So and obviously, um, Jin is going to be one of them. And so then it's like, yeah, what is the most optimal optimal other three yeah. for that team? I assume it's Cassian and K two. But again, I don't know. Like I really am hoping someone will really figure out like what the meta is for like Rogue One tunes on that team. In in for Radis, I ran, so he was only G eleven, and and he did have the Omnicron. Uh, mm. And I, I, the the guy that the, the guy that gave me feedback um, was was really great. It's it's uh, he was the first ten million uh, GP fight that I've had in, in Grand Arena since since mm. I, I wow. in months. So it was it was a very even roster base from that side. And he's like, look, I I brought in Bad Batch. You 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 know uh, you you drop the days on him, and it's it's really easy to take out from that okay. standpoint. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would be a hard but, counter for sure. Mm-hmm. But you get all that speed bump that Radis gets in gear 12, and you get six E mods, and all of a sudden his speed is upwards of 370, or he's gonna he's gonna outspeed Echo now. Like it's I mean, it's it's gonna be super easy to do. And he said he's like he said that he actually fought a, a relic uh Radis. And he's like, it got sideways really quick because they just, they take so many turns. But I ran the Cassian K2 Jin and Scarif, Scarif Rebel Pathfinder was, oh, okay. was my fifth. For your tank, uh, another tank. Hoping just to, to keep, you know, come back to, li- come back to life. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to find out it's going to be Chirrut um, mm. only because he can cleanse. I, I think the cleanse is going to be really important on that team. Okay. Uh, That's a good point. And, yeah, and, and I think so. Is that cheered in Bays, uh, or is it cheered in, in other groups? But I, I think Cheered's going to have to fit under that team somehow. Is is what okay. it's going to look like? Okay, okay, I like it. Yeah, good tip. Yeah, look at you, theory crafting over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I, have, I have forever wanted to go on a rant about how theorycraft is a made up word, but I actually Googled it before I did it. And I'm like, no, 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 it is an accepted definition of gamers creating. I'm like, no, 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 because I'm going to do it anyway. So the whole concept of a theory mm-hmm. is an idea that you have that you want to test. So calling something that I'm crafting a theory by definition a theory is something you created. So calling it a theory craft to me is like calling it a, an ATM machine. It's the same idea. You're sticking the word on the end of it. That makes mm-hmm, no right. sense. I'm an old man. I don't care. Uncle Pico is going to complain about this. It's stupid. I hate it. So. <laughs> yeah. It's. Um, I always think about. <laughs> the. Oh, what's that baseball team? The Los Angeles. Angels. Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, that's just the same yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's funny. Uh, but, but I think going back to Shorty for a second, you know, one of the feats that we consistently see across <laughs> conquests are droid kills. She's yeah. an answer to that. In fact, now you, you really, because if you get creative with, uh, with Chewbacca or Chewie and 3PO, now you might be able to actually get through, you know, I, I typically run those in batches of like three or four as I'm working through a section. Well, now you might be running them through batches of six or eight, which just makes it that much faster to kind of manage stamina from that side. There's always a, you know, do something with light side characters, do something with dark side characters. So you're going to see some of these that kind of happen over and over again. And again, it's, it's just back to, um, She's a Lord Vader character going through conquest. You know, Lord Vader, he does his his force crush, and then everyone kind of falls dead on the screen. She does that for 40%. That's gonna be off. And again, I, I know it's it's hard if you've got a if you've got an, a, a lower GP roster, you know, if you're at if you're at six and a half or seven million to say you should dump a bunch of resources into Shorty. But if you're struggling to get through crates on conquest. That is something I would seriously take a look at because there's so many resources, especially all the Datacron resources that they just put in there. That's going to look, it's, it's the most powerful 
currency in the game right now outside of Omnicrons, which you get there as well. Building a roster to be successful in, in that game mode mm-hmm. is, is similar to kind of when we all started in building a roster that could actually get through uh, Galactic War. You know, yeah. and, and that, that same piece, like it, it made a difference on people's rosters as they started pushing through from that side. So uh, don't sleep on the shorty. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like she's just viable in so many places. Yeah. So, and, and, and fun, really. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, and this is fun. the difference between even like shorty's team and inquisitors. Like even if inquisitors, inquisitors fell as short as they fell, if, if they were fun, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they're not even yeah. fun. Right. Like to play, but like, you know, shorty at least. And then that, it, it, that exemplifies that dynamic where even like shorty expectations, whatever it is, but that's a fun team. She's a fun tune to run. And, and one last thing on that team, because I, again, I always say that don't go to Reddit because it's a dumpster fire. And then I actually have been in a couple of Reddit fights recently, which I, oh, God, I just, I'm, I'm embarrassed. But uh, <laughs> there was, there was someone looking for some, some advice on what a shorty team would look like. Hmm. And I kept talking about, you want BB-8 and R2 together. Mm-hmm. And they were arguing with it and they were arguing with it. And, and you, the reason why BB-8 is, is important, not just because of the TM game, but BB-8 taunts. You got to put his eight on BB-8, and I forget yeah. which one it is, and it's the one that no one does. But he, he taunts when there's when there's only the, droids there. Mega. Even. Yep. Yeah. He he gets the um, he has uh, uh, foresight again. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. got an opportunity to get foresight, so he's not taking damage. But more importantly, if R2 is there, whenever BB-8 attacks out of turn, which he's going to because he's got that counter piece built in, he mm-hmm. pulls R2 along with them, and then R2 stunts. It's an it's That's an instant. Really, yeah. Because Arch is the only other resistance droid there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, I, I know I've seen some people say, like, no, you slot Chopper in there because he's a tank and, and, and you don't have another use for him. Yeah, but BB-8 can be your tank. You're right. But but BB-8's the tank and, and you pull R2 in and R2 just stun, stun, mm-hmm. stun, stun. And it goes back to where you're talking about, you know, having to turn on auto to get through that fight. Well, man, you slow that whole thing down all of a sudden if R2 is now stunning characters and they're losing the ability to ta- attack on that side. So, um, and, and I, I get the, the the gentleman that I was talking about this with on Reddit. Um, <laughs> gentleman. And, 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 and gentleman, actually, this was, this was, a, this was a polite <laughs> this was, okay. this, this was a polite exchange. And, 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 it, and it, was, it, was fair, it was a fair point that he was pointing out. He was, he was closer to the five and a half, six million. So, so sitting there and saying like, you know, I don't know if I want to put all these resources into BB-8 in, in 2022. I, I get that. But um, if, if you're on the fence with this team and you've, again, you, you put the time and energy into BB-8 and R2, uh, I know R2's got a lot of really interesting uses in, in other teams. Mm-hmm. Pull them out and just get them on that team if you're going to build it. Because I, I, I think it's going to be pretty pretty impactful that way. So but- No one can see, but everyone, Sarah covered her ears when you said uh, <laughs> about gearing uh, BB-8 uh, this time. Yeah. I was going to say, I know I'm heavily biased here, but <laughs> he's just so important. Like, he is. He is. Like you're going to chase a resistance team, which is going to lead you to a galactic legend. You can plug them into that story team. You can plug them into the Grievous team for counters, which is huge. Yep. Like Grievous countering teams and getting that turn meter boost at the start is massive. And like, I feel like everyone needs a good Grievous team. Like that's just such a good, plus he's a, he's a fleet. So it's just like, you're filling in all of these potential teams with one character. And if you mod your BBA appropriately, you can make them fast and you can make them beefy that when he's getting this foresight and, and countering and everything that he's hard to chew through. Like I remember doing a, a stream with Zareth and Calvin and we were doing my grand arena and Calvin was watching me use my resistance team with BB-8 and he actually stopped at one point and was like, this is a beefy BB-8. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> he just wasn't dying. <laughs> one thick droid you got there. Yeah, yeah that's but fun. like it, it, if you mod him properly, like, yeah, he can be. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Oh man, that hurts a little bit that people don't want to invest in him. <laughs> Uh, or give them like the Zetas. Whenever I see people like, haven't given them the the yeah. countering Zeta, and, like, I have call- the Zetas on them. I don't have the Tonto Mega, so I got to keep that in mind. Yeah. I will apply yeah. that uh, if mm-hmm. I cross that yeah. bridge. Um, and then I I think it's great to bring up R two because R two really isn't. He's kind of plug and play right now. I don't yeah. know that he necessarily oh, so has a home. Like yeah. I slotted him over to my Ray team for some extra buffs. Yep. 
because I have the Ray Datacron, but it's not like I was taking him away from anywhere else. And yeah, he could slot mm-hmm. in there because yeah, one, he's like giving you that extra health and protection bonus, but also extra offense, you know, yeah. to go with that team, which, you know, it's great because you really just want that uh, IG-88 wrecking fools. Um, so yeah, he's, he's great in there. And, and look, again, I'm, I'm going to go back to complaining about the, the Inquisitors oh, for a second. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have R two was a legendary character. BB eight was a legendary character. Mm-hmm. And how many years later do they have these phenomenal roles that they can play all over the place? And then you get a custom built team with a legendary character, and it's like taking a turd outside. All right, it's <laughs> out of toilet paper. It's uncomfortable. You hope no one's watching you do it because you're going to be really embarrassed if they catch you with it. It's just, yeah, right. I. Uh, uh, and I do not, I don't poop outside a lot. You sound that'll be the tag for the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. Well, uh, we touched a little bit on conquest there. Maybe it might be good to transition a little bit more into conquest talk. I know we were, uh, you know, an issue you were bringing up earlier today, Pico, because you were saying, you know, even I think with the Inquisitors, you can have this problem if you're running the VAAA combo and you're using your Inquisitors. It's hard to get the kills because yeah. the dots and the AA are like getting all the taking away all your kills. So you know you're kind of looking for some other builds, and uh, yeah, we had um, some really good suggestions um, on the server, which was really cool. And of course, the um, uh, not volunteer vanguard. I'm sorry. The uh, uh, what's like, zealous ambition? That yeah, the zealous ambition. Yeah, thing. that one's yeah. so much yeah, fun. It's so good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I even forgot to mention um, Perseverance earlier is also a really good one. Yeah. So I, I haven't I seen always, Perseverance in a hot minute. Mm. I, I haven't seen one. I always pick up a Zealous Ambition, yeah. um, but I never thought to stack them. And someone <sighs> suggested that. And, and I, I, I ran a couple of missions today and it was like, oh no, it just smacks fools in the face and they just, they fall over dead. Well, and um, like, if you're running that sortie team, like, uh, R2 is a support. Yeah. Right, R2. Yeah, he's going to a mission for yeah. uh, sector yeah. two, and yeah, it was just nice knowing like I could call some call him in while someone's in the yellow, and mm-hmm. like R2 was going to definitely yeah. get the kill. Like, it yeah. Was nice. uh, so, so there were some really good suggestions in there, and I'll be honest, I forgot most of them. Like, this is one of those I, I'm going to have to go back and look at it all the time because mm-hmm. I, I have. This was one of the weird cases of um, for me in conquest. My first four. And what are they called? I know that they're not called, I want to call them mods, but oh, the dab discs. No, the data discs. Thank you. Yeah. My first four was a volatile accelerator and three amplify agonies. Okay. So oh, I just nice. I mean, I, I had it built and I and I've been running with it. So it's normally I don't have that problem because I'm just filling in blanks as I run through conquest and I just kind mm-hmm. of manage through it. But it was like, oh no, I gotta put some thought into this now. Um mm-hmm. and, but there were some really great options that were out there. So yeah, and I think like the VA and AA build is just such an overpowered build that we all automatically are like, yeah, this is the one that you build right yeah. away. Um, but it does like it can it can steal your kills. I'm just so glad they haven't taken it away yet. You know, like yeah. <laughs> I really expected that they would, you know, like that we keep getting to use it throughout this conquest as well. You know, I think mm-hmm. there's some people who still, you know, aren't uh on top of the the aa combo like even a guy yeah. in my guild was like what are you guys using like for stuff and it's like yeah use this and then you know you unlock like the bam bam like, honchu bam train yeah. if you need like a cleanup at the end i mean i kind of i mean this the that build or like that team sorry uh, the bam team doesn't really lend itself to any uh feats or anything for this oh, conquest all the you survival think- ones the survival oh as yeah. the survival yeah. ones yeah okay i guess i was just thinking like because i'm putting together i think like comps that are knocking out two or three you know at a time like for well, sector- like a lot of the a lot of like the mini boss ones where you oh. need the characters to survive oh, it okay. contradicts what the other feat is so you have to do okay. it twice anyway yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that's um, a good tip yeah um and i've been using them for the scion and nihilus one since they yeah. have to live Okay. And, and a lot them with yeah, too. and a lot okay. of people don't have them built up. If you, you um, don't have a GL or something to carry right? those two, that's a great combo. And yeah, you just yeah. a win. You just spam it on the Datacron node, and we're like, okay, okay. Like, cool. Well, I, I think 
part of the reason why the VAAA, man, we got to find a better abbreviation than that. The VA. Yeah, that looks better than saying like, <laughs> volatile, <laughs> like accelerator. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but, but I think part of why that they haven't pulled that out of the game is it, it, it takes care of characters very quickly, but it also, to, to the problem I'm having right now, is it eliminates your ability to knock out feats. So you're yeah. having to make a choice. Do Am I going to move forward or am I going to have to build something else out of that? Where uh, the unstable accelerator, whatever the, 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 mm-hmm. the one that, that kept giving you turns over and over, like the, part of that problem was, mm-hmm. yes, you never, you never got hit, but at the same time, it also allowed your character to take 37 turns in a row. And if it was something they could do on a basic, then you got 37 credits for it that, that kind of built around that. So yeah, you, you were know, taking feats out in one battle yeah, yeah, all the time. Too, mm-hmm. too quickly, you know. And it, so I, I think that, that that one will stay around for a while. Um, but I, I I would like to see some some change up in some of the feats. Um, yeah. I like mm. the – I can't remember the, the four-star purple one that's got a feat associated with it that you need to, to land the fear and kill the target. Oh, Dread? Dread. I like that. Like to me, like that's, that's a cool one to play with. Cause you got to get it to land and then you gotta, you gotta take it out. Um, but I'd, I'd like to see some, I'd like to see those maybe change up a little bit to, to do some different stuff with, with the data discs for, for a bit. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, we'll get all the feats next month. Yeah. Yep. Which will be. Uh, yeah. And I just want to say, even with like my VAAA build, like right now I only have one amplify agony. So mm-hmm. that kind of gives me that little bit of more room where like they yep. don't just auto go to like one sliver of health where the dots will kill them. It kind of like takes them enough down that like there's room for me to jump in yeah. and get the kill. And then I also have like a zealous ambition on so I can, you know, jump in with those kills. And then, you know, regardless of what you're doing with that build, the ability exhaust data disc is really great to pair with that because that's the 10 debuffs and they get ability block mm-hmm. so then even like when they do get a okay. turn it keeps them from like going off on you which can be really good for like if you're fighting like one of those uh darth revan teams or something mm-hmm. um which can be kind of annoying um but yeah and then of course uh you know throwing a caustic emissions in there it's only one dot so, you yep. know, sometimes yeah. like that can be a nice little bonus in there as well. Um, but you kind of, I don't know, play around with the caustic emissions. I almost find like the blue one is like too powerful. Yeah. <laughs> the caustic emissions. So, yeah. Cause it gets like that burn in there too. It's just like, oh boy. Yeah. There, there's, uh, cause you do, you, you have to find that balance, right. You yeah. know, for being yeah. able to like win the battle, but also, you know, accomplish feats. But I think to that point, it's so I last last month's conquest, I finished every feat mm-hmm. and I, I I ran everything through because I had data crowns to farm. And yeah. you know, part of the I, I think part of the reason why they did this with in conquest with data crowns is they wanted people to play more than three or four days, where a lot mm-hmm. of people were only playing for for a couple on that. I was engaged in it for the for the longest period of time that I that I have through the entire month. So I I, I like it from that that perspective. Um, you know, I'll go burn a feat. I'll, I'll run through a feat if, it, if I, I get a reward out of it. But if at, the, if at the end of it, there's nothing coming from it, I really don't care. But uh, I, I like the change for data crimes to that point that, that because I do like Conquest as a game mode, I'm, I'm playing it more. Uh, mm-hmm. But now I'm, again, I'm, I'm, you know, it's the, like, I never did the, the, uh, the kills with the Inquisitors because mm-hmm. I could get through it. And, it, and again, managing something was like, no, now I just, I want to, I want to, I want to a star this, you know, I want to get through the whole thing and kind of burn it through. Well, that's actually a really good point to bring up that fee specifically, because a lot of people, and this is where I'm kind of like, I don't want to say torn, but I feel like a lot of my mindset in conquest is now shifting with, with the data crons being involved is a, that's feet in particular. Like a lot of people would cheese it. So you get the frenzy disc or the frenzy consumable and, you would purposely time out so that you didn't use up your frenzy and you could just repeatedly get the kills That's over and I over again, the right? Of my uh, but, last but, conquest was I finished everything and then I mm-hmm. bought that frenzy disc and just wiped out like yeah. everything immediately and just like not winning. That, not winning. But now I'm like, do I want to waste energy doing that when mm. I could be using energy yeah. to farm data crons? Um, right? So now I'm torn. I'm like, do I want to go for that feat? Or do I only want to plan for feats that I know that I can get when I win and farming 
data crons mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. I don't have to waste however many battles purposely timing out. Interesting. So it's like this weird, especially, you know, for, for accounts that are managing their rosters or, you know, don't necessarily have all of the tools. So they're, they're trying to be smart and make their way through it. And it's like, well, what's the best course now? Because yeah. before I'd be like, yeah, just time out. Don't, don't burn your stamina. Don't win the fight. And I was like, well, you kind of want to win the fights. So you can kind of keep yeah. moving forward. And then when go and farm it on data crons and it's just, ah, oh. mm-hmm. it's just so, such a, so- I feel so back and forth on it. I, I'm going to throw an unpopular opinion out, but, mm-hmm. but I, I want you to, to think about this for a second. So everyone that the approach to conquest over the past you know year has been to do it as efficiently as possible. I want to spend the least amount of crystals to get to the end. All right. But I am a firm believer right now that everyone in the game, if you can get to the end of conquest, you should be spending 250 crystals a day in conquest to, to build up the roll materials. And it's something I, where I want to throw this out. So I'm looking in the Datacron store right now. All right. Mm-hmm. So you can buy 25 binding Mark one uh, currencies, bits. I don't know, whatever these things are. The, the, you can get 25 of those. Yeah. The the half moons, you mm-hmm. get 25 of those for 125 crystals. You average between five and nine per fight mm. on node one, plus you tend to get something else that comes along with that. So if you run a hundred crystals, so if you let's say that you use your fourth refresh every day, so you spend a hundred crystals to refresh six fights, you're going to exceed what they're selling them for in the store right now. Yeah, and, that's and, a really and good that's point. That's where you know, and it's and again, it's I, I get my roster is in a different place than a lot of people. And we kind of had this conversation. I, I, I'm now spending 450 crystals a day because that's all that I have to spend crystals on. It's, it, that, that's it. Um, and someone's like, well, yeah, with your roster, that makes sense. And, and I get that. But taking this view of, I want to get through this by spending 50 crystals a day, you're doing yourself a disservice because you are not engaging with data crons. And I'll be honest, if you don't have them, you're gonna fall if you're willing to concede GAC, fine. But if you don't have them, you're going to fall behind. You're going to fall off where, where that sits. Um, yeah, the so, dynamic is completely cha- flip flopped now. There's, yeah. Yeah. Efficiency is like problematic. It's yeah. like not mm-hmm. in your benefit whatsoever. I mean, and, and I love that idea. In fact, I've just been doing it with the 350s, and you're right. I'm going to start doing it. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do that first 100 now. Yeah. Because, yeah. because uh, e- even and like the right, efficiency, efficiency is still there in terms of getting a three star on the nodes so that you can not have to waste energy cleaning them yeah. up so you can get yep. go to the data crons. Um, but even like, I know a lot of people, like it really depends where you are in terms of grand arena of how much data crons yeah. are going to affect you. That being said, if you are the one that has the data crons, that's an advantage that oh, you're going to leapfrog over these people that are ignoring them, right? So that's another way to, to kind of like keep it in mind. And I know a lot of people have been saying too, like um, it, you're going to out farm your roster, so to speak, like you'll like particularly smaller accounts because you can't equip them if your whole ro- roster or if your whole team's not relic three. So then you're going to run out of teams that you can put really them on. Say how many light side teams do yeah. we have that are all are yeah. five. But yeah. you know? my, my thought is, and Granted, we don't have all of the information yet because the one thing that I would love to know that we still don't know with Datacrons is what happens to the unused materials yeah. in the set. Are those going to dismantle into the next set or do we lose them is the is the question. Because I know that the Datacron will actually dismantle. But if you have three Mark I pieces, what happens to those three pieces or however yeah. many pieces you have? Mm-hmm. Um even if you have enough data crons that, or more data crons than you can equip, I think mm-hmm. it still makes sense to out, quote unquote, out farm your roster yeah. because you will build, you're going to compound that build moving forward. Mm-hmm. Your roster is still going to keep growing. So you might as well give yourself yeah. a, a head start on the next set that it dismantles into. Like it, it's not going to hurt you. 
three months is a long time. I don't think people really realize like how a long, long time three right months now. really is. <laughs> We're like you know? barely yeah. in the set too. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, that's that's what twenty seven grand arena fights that that yeah. data crown will be available for over that period of time. And um, it, and again, it's 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 hard. We kind of fall into these patterns with the game of, you know, it's like the, no, this is the way that I conquest. I try and I, I try to get raised or thin with it. And then these big changes happen. And, and I think where people are successful is they jump onto the change quickly. And it's the, it's the, to, to kind of move your head around the, the, the idea that, no, I don't want to be efficient. I actually want to, I don't want to get all 60 Lando potency downs on a single fight. If I have to do it on three or four fights, there's a payoff for me actually spreading it yeah. out over 60, 60 energy versus something else. And the folks that, that, that make those transitions with the game faster are the ones that are successful faster with, with engaging with these pieces. Um, I, you know, there was, I, I think a lot of people and not to kind of transition to data crowns out of conquest, but I don't think you can talk about one without the other, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, someone, um, in, in our guild, I, I believe it was, they took the approach of I'm going to build as many rank three data crons as possible because I think that's going to have the biggest impact on our, on our roster and, and put a ton of resources to that. And, and I appreciate that that mentality when it first came out, but I think we all learned very quickly, no, 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 you need to build a rank nine as fast as possible. And you need to have a yeah. plan of what, what that rank nine is going to look like. Yep. And, and a lot of people have kind of pivoted to that already. And it's, you know, Sarah, you talked about this last week on the show, and I know we had some mm-hmm. messages back and forth about it, but start at the top. Yeah. What do I want to end up with and work my way backwards through that? Because that's, that's you know, uh, but I, I, I think, again, you can not like Datacrons. I appreciate the fact that they're changing the game up to, to at least make it the strategy used in the game feel fresh. Mm-hmm. Well, and like, th- that's the thing. Like for me, I still personally don't know how I feel about Datacrons. Some days I'm like, yeah. okay, they're here. And I'm like, yeah, neutral. Wildly now. Yeah. yeah. And now, I'm, and some days I'm like, I hate, like to, uh, it was today I was working on rolling a Datacron. I was trying to build that level nine, right? Like chase it. And I was just getting so frustrated because the level three didn't roll how I wanted it to. The level six didn't roll how I wanted it to. And you do the re-roll and you're like, great. The re-roll didn't roll how you, yeah. like the re-roll gave me crap options too. And it's just this. So like today was one of those days where I was like, I hate you. Like you're, yeah. you're the worst thing ever. But then when you do get like, also on the other like side of it, I'm like, but I have that really awesome raid data cron. That yeah. one rolled how I wanted it to. So it's like, it's it's so back and forth, but they're not going anywhere. So yeah. Yeah. I want to jump in here with a couple of thoughts. Yeah. Like one, I really liked what you mentioned about like over data croning your roster, right? Because I do think that it behooves you, even if like you don't have a number of teams, it, like the mats aren't doing you any good if mm-hmm. they're not like invested into a data cron. Like, and then whether you're in GA or whatever the case may be, and you have that one team that can use it, it, it also also nice to have some versatility, you know, yeah. with like maybe this counter or where I'm going to use it this time for Grand Arena would be yep. better with like, you know, one that gives me a buff or one that gives me a TM boost or, you know, whatever the case may be, like that versatility will help you. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say was like, yeah, like I'm 0 for 5 on trying to get that TM me too at level three for set two. So right mm-hmm. now, like I'm stuck at a place where like I can't even go for a six. I'm still just trying to build now my fourth yeah. level three mm-hmm. so that I can start working on a level nine. Right. And so, and yeah. the other thing I was going to mention was that as Sarah, thankfully, like, I'm so glad that you shared this on the last episode and pointed out that re-rolling a data cron gets, and Pico, you were the or origin yeah. of this, re-rolling mm-hmm. a data cron gets more expensive. So even what I've been doing my strategy now, which has seemed to flush out is that like, I go to a three, if I didn't get that three that I wanted, and normally I would go to a six, except there's no dark side. So it's only going to be yeah. the light side. There's really no detriment to like re-rolling that three right now. Mm-hmm. But if I don't get that three only re-roll it once because yeah. it's not really worth trying to re-roll it a second time and if that doesn't hit start with the next three because i think yeah. if you just keep trying to do that like the second time at that point 
it's not you've it's not within the re realm of like efficiency resource use you know so, and so that's my strategy right now like i'm just trying to hit that level three that i want and so i'm just going like three didn't hit it reroll didn't hit it three you know and just going through that cycle until i can get that tm1 and then that's going to be the basis for my nine and and I think that's actually a great idea, the, the way that you're going about it, because and, and it, it, it's funny you say that, and I, I didn't do this on purpose, but I was trying, I, I was basically, I, I'm, I'm getting a little flush with the Mark One pieces. So I was just kind of building a couple, a couple up and I was lamenting that again, that I couldn't get that TM gain. And I, I rolled like three or four of them. And all of a sudden I hit the TM one and I'm like, oh wait, and it's, oh, it's special damage and special damage. Like, this is this is the direction I want to maybe go with a Jedi one for that that side. So, yeah, I, I wasted two or three that are on there, and I might just throw them away eventually. But it was a lot cheaper to roll that because it, it, they made a big change with the number of mats that you earn mm -hmm. between Conquest One and Conquest Two. And I think that we're going to find that we're going to have a lot more building materials, but reroll materials are going to get. I think reroll materials are where they're going to chase you with crystals and packs. I, I think that that's mm -hmm. the direction that they're, that they're going to go. And again, I, I'm okay with that because they get, they got to find a way to monetize it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Which I think it's okay that they monetize it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and have they a, ever? I mean, yeah. is this the yeah. first time we've ever had packs with no cap? I mean, I feel like anytime we've had Zetas, Omicrons, yeah. anything for the yeah, most I think part. I mean, unless it's like for shards, right? But for, you know, something like this, and especially with its timing, it seems like this is the first time we've ever seen a no cap on stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is like, so you I, could, because the, the no cap is on the, the crystal pass, yes. right? So you yeah. could just buy a vault. Yep. Like, it's just nuts. And there is no way in hell I am buying those packs. I mean, it's, it's so, so think about it. I, you you roll a rank nine twice and you now need 80 mats to roll. Mm -hmm. Those packs will give you between 20 and 80 of each one of those with the higher piece being 20. So you're looking at 4,000 crystals, essentially, is your worst case scenario to get one more reroll. Nah, that's... Nope, that, that's, not, that's not a good use of crystals at, at that mm -hmm. point. I, I know there are folks that will do it and um, someone in old dirty blasters was they were fighting in the the top 100 of, of kyber one and they actually the, po the opponent they were going against had all three rank nine characters mm -hmm. so they had ray they had kenobi and they had second sister all at rank <sighs> nine and, and i mean it's just like more power to you but i, I don't i don't need to be that good mm -hmm. so i i just um in, in general, I think right now, and I'm kind of kicking myself that I did I did one of the twenty five dollar packs. I, I think the I, I think the the outside of the 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 weekly Datacron store, mm -hmm. um, I think anything that's shown up in shipments is just bad. It's mm. it's just generically bad across the table. Yeah. Um, so. Let's see. And I just wanted to specify because there are packs that you can purchase for dollars, right? And then mm -hmm. there are packs yep. you can purchase for crystals, right? And are you just referring specifically to the ones with that are worth like the money, the $24.99 packs? So you're still buying yeah. like because the, the ones that are $9.99 crystals seem like they're worth it for the mats directly, right? I I, I don't think so. So like so oh, okay. take a look at um so. So I, I think that, so th th there's two pieces here. One, I think the, the number of mats needed are too in flux right now. Like, I, oh, I don't think that I we, have a, we have a good understanding on the, on the $25 pack. I don't think we have a good understanding of how many mats we're going to have at the end of conquest. So you're, you're like, I'm surprised on day four, how many of the Mark one mats that I currently have in inventory. Right. So I, I think that, that there's too much of not knowing where you're going to end up to go and spend that money now. And I don't think they're going to be around long enough, you know, till the end of conquest to see what it is. So I think we need to see some of that play out a little bit. Now, if you look at, so I'm looking at the 999 crystal pack. And if you look at the Datacron reroll mats, all right. So for a thousand crystals, you get between 15 and 80 
of the Mark threes, which are the, the nine and the nine is, is probably the big one that, that you want to, you want to roll. So that breaks down to a 45% chance for 15, a 30% chance for 30. So you have a one third chance of not even getting a third of the mats that you need to get a reroll. I mean, oh, wow. you're potentially looking at 3,000 crystals at that point okay. to do it. I mean, the reality is you're going to get 15, and, and, and I, I thought it was 20. So you're, you're going to have to roll that five times. It's mm. 10,000 crystals at, at that point oh, to, okay. to, to do that. No, I'm sorry. That's wrong. That's 5,000 crystals, but still, but still. That's, that's too okay. much. That's, that's, right, that's right. way too much from that point. And, and this is like a really good thing to keep in mind is most like the majority of players, obviously the majority of players are not in the top 100 of grand yeah. arena. You don't need to chase every single. So like, I'm just going to, I'm not going to say who this is, but I'm looking at someone who's in the top five on dot GG. He has 15, one, five level nine. data And, there, yeah. and there, so that means there's duplicate. So there like, are duplicates. single tunes, which is like you can't put two on but second sister. Here's right. here's the crazy thing: the ones for this new set for set two that he has, he has. Let me just scroll real quickly. Here. Oh, you he have to five. scroll. I have to <laughs> okay. scroll. He has five <laughs> level nines from this current set. Yeah. All of them have the twenty five percent turn meter at level three. Yeah. So how many yeah. re rolls? Yeah. How many materials of re rolls were you spending? Yeah. there like that's like it, it's just boggling my brain and, mm-hmm. I, and i'm in the same boat and, and i want to i want to clearly state because again as somebody spends in the game and i get a little frustrated when people make judgment calls on, on what i do i don't care if this person wants to spend mm-hmm. twenty thousand crystals a day i don't care mm-hmm. i'm going to make the assumption that they're taking care of the things that they need to and this is well within their budget and this is what the, like there's a whole argument to be made around the predatory nature of which again i don't agree with i think that we should be adults and, and, and make that work but i i think that right now there's a little bit of fear that i need these to be competitive and there's a little bit of a fear that if i don't have these things i can't run where they need to where i think that people should be looking at this is i get to do a lot of really cool things like i don't have the ray uh, the Ray Datacron that heals mm. you seven and a half billion points of, of health when it goes off. But <laughs> man, every time that happens, I would be so excited to see that. And, and I think that those things are great. And I'll be honest, I'm not seeing anything with these Datacrons that make them unbeatable. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the Super Ray Omicron, I, I think uh, it was someone in, in our guild that faced it and they're like, no, I, I just made sure I went into ultimate second. And I, yeah, won. with like a jam, you know, yeah, no, it was, it, it was, was with a, Ray. They're like, I just, I brought in a oh, Ray I mirror see. and I yes. just, right, I just right, made right. sure you that I went, mirror, right. I went yep. second. Now yep. there, there are, and, and I think someone else is saying, well, they fell down because uh, they had the Omnicron that speeds up getting to your alt with Ray. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they couldn't delay it. Like it was a case, like they couldn't delay it to the point where, where it happened. No, I take it back. The other side had the, had the the supercharge on, 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 on the TM on that one. So they got to it so farther ahead. Yeah. And it's okay. Sometimes you're going to take it on the chin. I mean, the reality is we're supposed to go 500 with some of these. Um, I had someone in the last round, and I don't have a great Ray on a crown, but I have a Ray one there. They had a great J- JMK, or JMK. So I brought Kenobi on, on offense and I mm-hmm. took them out. And they took one shot at my Ray and lost and then messaged me and said, I can't win. Mm-hmm. So I'm stopping. And this is public service announcement. If you can't beat your opponent, send them a message and say, I tried and I lost. Because mm-hmm. what that means is that they won't obsessively be checking Grand Arena to see if they won or not. <laughs> and let's kind of people met manage their time. Like mm-hmm. I, I did that in the first round of somebody. I was, I was on vacation. I got two wins. Uh, I was on vacation. I was traveling that day and I messaged him and I'm like, Hey, I'm not going to attack. I'm going to get my 10 points, but travel yeah. with the family and it's not worth my time. And they're like, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And then mm-hmm. I got their one team win mm-hmm. and we both got to go about our, go about our day from that side, do the cool thing and just, just tell somebody like when you're done, it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm so mean. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
<laughs> like so what i've been doing a couple of these last times with it is like the person has like cleared me before but then they stop on ships or something right yeah and let's say like they drop a battle so then i basically so if i go all the way through and i clear ships then that's it for them right they know that yeah. they can't beat me if i one shot the whole board so i'll get to ships where i just take a slight lead right and mm-hmm. then i stop and i force them to like yeah. take ah. so sometimes they'll just take like beat one ship and then like i'll beat one ship and so then i force them to like beat another ship and then yeah. like that even though like i i know like especially since we did our like uth ship episode like i've, I've got my ships pretty like solid now i, I went six and oh uh for uh because I, I i didn't log into the very first uh ga and then the last two rounds i went six and oh so i'm like back in the like low 2000s again and it's just like oh god like next i'm dreading next week uh three v three but um uh but yeah, I just, I kind of toy with them. Like <laughs> I've been toying with, with them a little bit and forcing them to play the game. It, oh. that, that's fine as well. I, yeah. I, I don't, and I've, I've done the same thing. I, I yeah. think there, there's a, I think there's a difference between playing the ship game on the back wall and the, I took a couple of swings at your front row and it's the, are they just waiting? Did they get busy or are oh, they really yeah. right. at that point right. is, is kind of right. where it sits, but um, Yeah. I did have that situation where I one shot everything and I saved my JML for Ray um, thinking, cause I looked at his history and I saw like a JML beat it. Um, but yeah, my JML just got wiped out by the Ray and then yeah. it's just like, okay, so I just left the whole board except yeah. uh, down in one shot. And I just, I wasn't even going to try a second try on the Ray. And yeah. then luckily um, he put a really hard board. So the fact that I one shot, it was like, I was really proud that I even got to there. Sad, sad I didn't get the full clear, but then um, he dropped like on my uh, star killer team. He dropped on my LV in the back. And it was just like, okay, so he didn't clear either of yeah. those sections. And um, so it wasn't really uh, much of an issue, but, uh, but yeah, like when I hit that Ray wall though, it, it, <laughs> it was a bit yeah. choked me up a little bit I, was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think i did go and like rage in my discord like this stupid raid datacron and I, was like, oh, I won anyway so it's fine but uh but yeah i because it does like i feel like i almost need to save like a jam k to take out that ultimate yeah. ray one and, although i have that ray datacron now so like i i, mm-hmm. I did <laughs> To spend a little bit extra resources i got the nine and then i re-rolled and i got the exact setup i want to have like 300 health steel yeah. i have like the 75 percent offense i have like the tm and uh, whatever it's uh, it's great and then and actually it's all like i got all tenacity health and health steel i only have like three bonuses from yeah. it from like my six other like bonus you know s- slots so yeah i'm like really happy with the, what where that one is at and yeah it feels good when you get like a data cron to hit where you want but yeah now i'm like four data crons into set two and i haven't even gotten like yeah beyond yeah. The level <laughs> three and i'm frustrated yeah. so it's kind of interesting yeah. another thing i did want to mention that you guys kind of alluded to was like there is a diminishing return with these i think you you don't need Need to, or you don't need to, depends on where you're at, but figure it out for yourself. You don't need th- to feel like you need to get three level nines, right? Like right. personally yeah. for me, like I'm an eight and a half million account. My plan is to get like a level nine of every set and then like build, you know, some supports like build a level six and build a couple level threes have a little bit of diversity because then you have to also keep in mind you're gonna have like three sets active you know so if i have three yeah. level nines at one time and like you know four level sixes and a couple threes to support some lower teams that will probably work well for me right mm-hmm. and so yeah um you know and and I, and I think that's feasible to manage you know that i know that that's attainable for me you know, so like setting that expectation, uh, you know, uh, well, me, I'll, I'll be happy with it. Well, and it will realistically get easier to get to that level nine because right. like once, once you're set one level yeah. nine dismantled, you're starting that, at level six. Exactly. Right. So yeah. you're going to have a little bit of a leg up there where you're not starting from scratch every time. Yeah. So right. it'll be a little bit easier to kind of keep going. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Part so like I wonder with the, with these datacrons if we're not seeing a little bit of kind of the the 
the cooling device from Conquest with the data disk blowback where, you know, the developers had some really cool ideas and we're going to put them in the game and then we're going to realize, oh no, some of this is stupid. Like so, some of the, I mean, so there, there's 25% turn meter game to start mm -hmm. and then you're going to put a Mon Mothma uh, rank nine that gives turn meter every time she uses her basic, which is every turn. Mm -hmm. And that's just stupid. Like that, it, it, and I'm going to build it because I have an R7 Mon Mothma, but it's stupid. It's 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 going to be <laughs> someone's. It's going to be the phone breaker. This is what's going to happen in that mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. And and I think some of these that they're probably going to be a little bit too overpowered to start with. And then we're going to see a scale back on on some of them. And it, you know, it's what are the next sets are going to look like. And we're going to get back to this point where I think that we're going to maybe come back to earth on some of these a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, again, not that I think any of them are unbeatable, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I just, I, I, I think we're going to probably come down a little. Well, we well, haven't really had a GA with the set two yet. Either. No, but right. Solo had a really good point on, on Gambit on Monday night where he was saying that, okay, everyone's chasing this level three, start with 25% Terminator. It's just going to cancel each other out because you're yeah. going to go in yeah. and like, they have the 25% term. You're like, okay, well, I'll put my 25% term. Like, and it just cancels yeah. each other out. Well, then so, it's incumbent yeah. to make sure you don't have that gear 12 or, or you know, <laughs> gear 12 tune yeah. in there. Cause there's, I mean, it's, it's certainly you forget. And then you try to throw it out. Yeah. Like cause I throw, I use my JMK team all the time, but then I throw my Plo on. Yeah. Plo is because Plo's the tank. Uh, Plo's the tank. Of, yeah. The tank, right. Yeah. Because he's just going to get murdered. I just need someone to taunt and get murdered by, mm -hmm. um, cat if i'm doing the mirror because you know especially and then it's like oh right no i can't and i'm like oh well you know this is gonna be a hard matchup let me at least throw like a like a level three on here for a little bit of bonus no i don't know i can't you like can't. I, I gotta yeah. find either relic him or find someone another tank that i have relic up um to slot in there so um yeah just kind of interesting when you hit that wall you forget you're like oh right yeah, yeah. yeah. your 12 tune on your you idiot um <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like as we, we did record last episode and then I got a look at the set two abilities. And when I first saw that TM, like, I mean, I, I almost spiraled a little bit. Like I felt faint, you know, like, oh, <laughs> I, you know, um, cause it's just like, what, what is happening here? You're like, it's hot in here. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, I, I, the, the thing I'm just really having a hard time wrapping my mind around is that CG has spent so much time and effort on balance of this game, right? They have mm -hmm. time and time again, like taken things away to rebalance or given things to balance, you know, and made sure that tunes weren't too powerful or tunes weren't beating GLs or GLs weren't too crazy. You know, or they have these lifter units. Just, I mean, like you can just go on and on again and again where they balance this game. And now I feel like they're willy nilly throwing things in that are imbalancing this game and you know i would think that too like uh, there's a part of me that realizes like oh you know we're putting a datacron that's imbalancing this team but you've got another datacron that yeah. might balance on the other side right but um and so I, again I, I i just i am still coping with just seeing areas where it's imbalanced i understand maybe these two imbalances will balance each other but just mm. the imbalance in and of itself in a game where i've seen them work so hard year after year to not let things like this happen i mean they took away just like you were saying before in conquest you know the uh the uh, deployable cooling system deployable cooling system right so, so a couple of things there and and yeah i i think that Datacrons opens the door for creativity that doesn't exist in the game right now. And, and if you think about it, the meta is not going to shift until we get another Galactic Legend. It, it's just mm -hmm. that, that simple. And I mean, right, right now, Grand Arena got stagnant because the, the, the top end of, of GAC, and it was starting to filter its way down, is the idea is I'm going to set as many Galactic Legends on defense as I confidently think that I can counter on the other side. And 
most of the time I'm facing five Galactic Legends on defense and, and there's one that, I, that I'm bringing from the other side. All that is, is again, it's, 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 this is what we do. Everyone does the same thing and it becomes a race of who's got better mods or who, who doesn't click the wrong button in the, in the wrong place. I think Sorry, data crons, <laughs> I, I, I think the, 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 you know, the interesting thing with data crons is, is it does allow them flexibility to meta shift much faster than having to create. I mean, I'm going to build a Datacron in two weeks. It takes me three months to build a new character for most people to, to have an influence on that. And a lot of times I need more than one character to make that happen. So I think it allowed, I, I do agree with their, their statement that this is there to shift the meta. I don't agree with the way we shift the meta is by putting a bunch of Datacrons on Galactic Legends. You're just, you're moving yeah. the problem from A into to A sub one on, on, on that side. Mm. You know, all of this, the, the game still rewards creative thinking. And, and the example that I'll, that I'll give, and I, I ran into this the other day, um, he had a jam, he had the, the super JMK, you know, Datacron, and I, I, I whooped it because, you know, I brought my very similarly aligned piece, and because I was on offense, I got to manage it. And then I looked at his, his Palpatine team, and it was Palpatine, Mara, Starkiller, uh visas and barris and i'm like oh i won they didn't bring a tank this is the dumbest person i've ever seen mm -hmm. didn't check the speed on mara mara was clocked at 374 <sighs> there is not a character in the game that's not a galactic legend that can outspeed them i ran five teams against it and could not win because i took my one galactic legend that i had and i that I brought right. on offense with Kenobi and I went the other direction and I immediately messaged them and I'm like, I am so impressed by what you did there. And again, you couldn't burn through Mara because Barris was there to actually prevent all the crits from happening. So oh. you couldn't get through it. I couldn't do squat with it. There was nothing that I could do. And like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh, well I can bring my bounty hunter team. Nope. I couldn't actually get my bounty hunters fast enough to beat it. Uh, I'll bring, Oh, this is easy. I'll just daze the entire team. Oh, nope. I, I clock out at 360 on, on my echo. There was no way for me to beat that team. And, and it was the, and, and I'm not going to share the person's name. Please don't go through my, my history to find it. But they came back with like, yeah, it's given a lot of people problems. You know, wow. like they clearly, like they, they knew what it was doing from that side. The game rewards creativity. Totally. And, and I think that's what, what, what data crons are going to kind of bring to this. I just think that we're still dealing a little bit with CG trying to figure out what Datacrons should really look like. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And, and that's, I, I think, yeah. I was gonna say that's part of the exhibition period. Yeah. They're yeah. figuring it out. It's a, we are in a live bit beta. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah. well, but, but I think we all know TM is gonna like tip the scales and they're oh, just like, yeah. nah, bro, we're going TM right out the gate. <laughs> yeah. But, but it, it's, it's a fair point though. When, when everyone, when everyone starts doing the same thing, hmm. the people that excel are the ones that think outside of the box. Hmm. So it's, it's great that everyone's got that, that 25% one, but someone's going to figure out like, no, no, no. It's I still really don't. One. It's I'm trying good. so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same. yeah. So I, I just, you know, I, I hope that, that people give it time. I know that, yeah. you know, I, I saw again, another Reddit post today that, uh, and I wasn't actually looking for Galaxy Heroes, but I saw another Reddit post. You know, we I know we all agree that Datacron is the worst thing in the world. No, we don't. We don't mm -hmm. agree with that. There, mm -hmm. There's sometimes you got to embrace the chaos and and, and kind of just get in and kind of see where it works. And, and I think people are going to find that's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will say there's a part where well, I mean, I guess I, I appreciate that you brought up you know the packs because even though you know I, I've got enough crystals, I could throw a thousand down. Uh, for like uh, some extra mats um, but for me just knowing that it won't last longer than two months mm -hmm. you know yeah. or last longer than three months it, it doesn't feel like it's a good investment for those crystals yes it may help me for the short period or something and I guess it all depends on you know where if I get you know drop too far like or something in grand arena or I notice it affecting too much but uh, outside of that which I don't expect um yeah, the, the temporariness does 
still make me hesitate on them as an investment. I'm still giving my all in farming conquest and using yeah. all the resources I can to there and using the weekly shop. In fact, I mean, I'm using more in that, you know, conquest weekly store yeah. resources than like I've ever been comfortable with, but, you know, I'm really just reconfiguring my allocation or my, you know, uh, 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 farming efficiency so that I can allocate it, you know, there. Yeah. The last thing I also want to say on the pack is, um, and again, I, I'm not a statistician by any means. And I there are folks that go through and kind of like, well, this is worth this many, you know, crystals per mm -hmm. unit. And it's so, but with the, the crystal packs right now, you are spending crystals for a percentage chance for a successful outcome mm -hmm. to turn around and use that for a percentage chance of a successful outcome. <laughs> that that that's a that's a mathematical failure is as far as i'm concerned i mean you're mm -hmm. basically you're asking you know it's what are my odds of, of getting you know a heads a heads on a coin flip well it's 50 percent. what are my odds of getting two heads on a coin flip well that number gets much smaller it's it's that same piece from that that scale from that side you know mm -hmm. look i will freely admit if you put a pack in front of me that's going to and whatever the pack was today for for 10 omni uh, for 10, 10 Omni mats. Yes. Well, I said, yes, yeah. Yeah, because I know what I'm getting out of that. Yeah. Zetas and Omnis, yeah. The, the, the crystal one. No. Cause that's, I, I don't really like oh. the gambles on that side, but if you're going to give me a fixed, okay. if you're going to give me a fixed chance for it, oh, gotcha. I'll typically say yes. In some of okay. those, in, in those cases, but, um, you know, pull the lever, win a prize, maybe pull the lever to win a prize that gives you an opportunity to pull leather letter you know, lever and, and win a prize. That, that's a, that's a failure as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for the average player, regardless of your GP, if you're not crazy, crazy, hardcore top end, I, I feel like we will earn enough through conquest that, yeah. and, you know, getting them in territory war here and there that, that, and then the weekly shipments that you're not going to, necessarily have to buy these packs if you want to by all means that's your choice but i don't think it's going to be necessary it, and i think the other piece that, that's kind of that's going to help some of the data crown pieces I, I think that the the grand arena changes have been in play for long enough that people are learning that if they're playing at that k1 k2 level and they're going back and forth between the, it's not as detrimental as what they originally thought of. Like if I, if I'm not in the top half of K1 at all, at all times, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to play the game because I'm not going to be able to get enough crystals. I think people are learning like, I don't know. There's that, that K2 K1 area is, is, is a great place to be in part of that. I mean, I, I chased the, the, the top 250 for a period of time. Um, I don't do that anymore. Like I, I just want to, play grand arena and sometimes be successful and sometimes lose. And, and I, I stopped chasing it from that side. And now I just get to go out. Now, look, I want to win. I want to clear everybody first shot. I, I want to be smarter than the person that I'm going up against, but um, I don't get as upset if I lose. And all of a sudden I am not in the top five of, you know, old dirty blasters kind of where they, where they sit from, from ranking perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot more people are becoming comfortable with that as well. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That mindset's shifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I guess I just wanted to yeah mention I pulled back a lot from stuff I farm in shard shop, you know, because the shard yeah. value in that conquest store seems to be the best value for resources. And then, yeah, so I can allocate more into there and just kind of adjusting my, you know, econ my uh, resource economy. And then last thing, just since I was like looking in the shop, I just wanted to mention how awesome it's been that like the relic amplifier um, packs for like 500 crystals have been in there for so long. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. highly recommend everyone like the 500 crystals for the carbonite circuit board mm -hmm. is like the best deal around. Like anytime I've, I've bought that two or three yeah. times is like, I've been winning GA um, and I have an extra 500 crystals laying around. Um, it's just like the best value in there. And then I'm sure the other people run into other um, walls with uh, these amplifiers and it just yeah 500 crystals um you know and unlimited it's i just love the value there so uh even though as pico said it is uh pull lever get a chance so, <laughs> but that's a good right, chance but, but it, it is but but to that point also if you get a bad roll you lost two days. That, that's all that it is. Cause I mean, they're, they're 500 crystals and you earn 260 every day as it is. Yep. You know, it's, it's not where again, the, 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 uh, the data cron packs right now, they're more than a winning grand arena. Yeah. 
Like that, that, that blows my mind yeah. is that if, mm-hmm. if I'm supposed to get four and a half wins a month in grand arena, I, I mean, that's, that doesn't earn me enough crystals to guarantee that I'm going to get my lowest roll uh, to be able to, to, to do one re-roll on, on a, on a rank nine. Yeah. You know, that, that, that there's a big difference between those two. Mm-hmm. So that's a good point. Well, uh, uh, next up on a light, lighter hearted note, uh, we'll start uh, winding down here. But uh, Pico, you did something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, you went and completed the Fulcrum quest. Well, actually, I should yeah. say you went and completed at least I know tier three. You went and found a guild and you went moonlighting and did <laughs> took a little uh, vacation on Hoth. Uh, and uh, yeah, got, uh, I guess my first question is, did you f- complete the Fulcrum quest? Have, have you? Uh, I did not because now four, you okay. need like yeah. 20 arena wins win- with arena Rebels. Wins. Yes. So oh. I am fingers oh, so crossed for Galactic Legend. No, so I finished. I finished tier three. Oh, okay. But you need it's in At the tier, tier four, four of it. Uh, so my fingers are crossed that we get a Galactic Legend Leah. Like or, that, that, okay. that is that is. <laughs> you get that Mon Mothma Datacron. Well, even the CLS Datacron, you can yeah. probably yeah. take out a GL like, like a <laughs> for uh, six and three rolls. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to give me a second to kind of tell the full story on this because it, it's it's kind of funny the way that it works out. Please, um, I can't wait. I, I'm excited to do it myself. I'm stuck on that level three. Yeah. I also need to take a vacation on Hoth, so yeah. I, I'm I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I I have wanted to do this for a while. And I, I was kind of trying to talk the guild into when Sarah went away for her honeymoon was over Lightside mm-hmm. territory battle. I'm like, well, you know, Sarah's not going to be here. We don't have someone to run this for us. And we should just go back to Hoff. And, and part <laughs> of that reason was I was supposed to be going to Las Vegas for a work conference during that same window. And those days for me are typically eight o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. And I, I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to participate. So, so there's levels of selfishness occurring. The, the, there was absolutely, there, 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 was, there was a certain piece of this, like I was trying to get this to help me out. There was also uh, like another guy in ODB yeah, who was, was couple, also yeah. going to be away. Like they, we were all just like, yeah, we're not going to be here. <laughs> yeah. So when it looked like that they weren't going to do that, I just went looking for for a guild to, that would kind of let me be there for a period of time. Um, and, and, the whole idea here is I would be, I set an alarm every day cause I was on the West coast. So it was three hours earlier, set an alarm every day. And I was just going to auto battle the fights. And I told him like, I will, I will platoon all the good characters. I will fill all of your gear requests. Like I will be the model, you know, I, I will not attack raids if you guys don't need me to. So I don't okay. steal any resource from anyone. Right, I was going to say, or you can complete the Sith raid for yeah, them. Or right? yeah. Or like, if you need it, I, I will do this piece in, in the whole nine yards. So uh, territory, battles kicks off on monday they added me to the guild kicks off on monday and i again steamrolled the the whole thing like bad batch on hot is not fun you know uh so i i steamrolled the first day i steamrolled the second day and then i'm at dinner on tuesday night at las vegas uh with uh, a customer of mine and and some people and i started to feel kind of funny like arms felt kind of weird and and a little little I, i didn't have a fever but it was the Oh, I need to leave. So I left and woke up that morning coughing and I went and got a COVID test and I tested positive. Um, And then I had to quarantine in a hotel room in Las Vegas for five days. So my reason that kind of started this of, I won't be able to participate in territory battles because I was going to be in Las Vegas. I had all the time in the world as I did not leave this room for five days that I could have actually been doing this. Instead, it was, oh. all right, it's 10.05 and I've finished all my territory battles in the morning. Now, what do I do for the rest of the day from that standpoint? So, um, yeah, I, I got through it. It, it, was, it was fun. Um, I was getting very, very anxious on because the, the last step of it is uh, it's rogue. You need to beat the rogue one mission in yep. phase six. Yep. And as I was watching how they were doing territory commands, they were focusing on bottom and it was a mission in the middle and we weren't at one star. And oh, I'm God. like, messaging, I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm like, I know I asked you if you get to phase six and you said, yes, I should have clarified. Do you get to phase six middle? 
<laughs> and he's right. like, we'll get there. We'll get there. And I, I just realized again, it's because my, my GP was so large and those buckets are so small. Mm-hmm. I had enough to get us there by myself. So I was <laughs> oh, holding on to it. It was going to be basically like oh with five minutes left. If we weren't there with five minutes left, I was yeah. just going to deploy it. I'm like, I, I apologize folks, but, but this is why I'm here. I'm not going to, and, and they, yeah. they, they got there and, and everything. So, um, wow. and it was fun going back and, and, um, you know, the, the ADAT mission or the, the, the ATST mission that was there, that was, that was really cool and kind of seeing some of that, but, um, yeah, it, it was a, it, it, so I ran, um, I purposely was trying to run teams that were not galactic legends, but did not exist when Hoff came out. So I ran like the Mon Mothma team. I ran, uh, you know, bad batch, some of those things. And they just, you know, Oh, someone took a turn and everyone's dead. Someone took a turn and everyone's dead. Uh, but yeah, I, I got through it. So um, that story had more yeah. twists and turns than an M Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> Look, That's you great. guys threw a quarter in the machine, and I'm going to give you the full quarter's value. That's, yeah. that's the way this works. I I was a little sad that we didn't do Hoth. I was like, I would I would do that again. Just yeah. auto battles. Yeah. Well, because I've been needing cam. So now that I have the seven star cam, I feel like I'll do a couple, you know, with the guild again for a little bit. And then, you know, at some point I am, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to take a little break. Uh, I guess I just need to make sure that uh, if I do that, I don't get COVID. Uh, that's the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would say align it to a vacation. It works out well there. The, the, fl- the, the other piece that's interesting is, so this is the first time that I've done light side territory battles in two months. And I mean, like mm-hmm. I went into phase one, and I'm like, I forget what I do where, like it, it, it was all of a sudden it was just like, you know, 60 days goes by like, uh, do I use fin lead? You know, I don't have that. Uh, is the, Oh yeah. This, this is, you know, it, so it was just trying to like sit down and kind of figure out again, like, what do I do here? What are the teams? What do they matter? Mm-hmm. And of course I dropped the battle. So no oh, I dropped one too. Uh, and it's, it's funny too. Cause like, um, so we did. They, we did geo tv when i was on my honeymoon and i just wasn't paying attention to it so i wasn't mm. tracking anything i wasn't keeping normally i'm like very mar- meticulous when i'm like, okay how m- like to to the point how many points did we get in this zone and like just so i could see where we're going for our next star mm. that f- when phase two was about to start people were like are we not chasing the the new star and i was like I don't know how we did last month because I wasn't paying attention. So I don't know if we should chase this star. And I was like, let's do it. <laughs> You're like, uh, yes. I was like, yeah. I so it's like literally it, it's midnight last night. It's an hour before the phase is going to flip over. And I'm doing math trying to be like, okay, can we, can we, do I need to change the plans? I need to change the plans. Like this is so ridiculous. So vacation is great. Except for when you come back and you're like, how do I plan this again? <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> yeah. But this has been super stressful because I think I, I forget the number of ship battles that we needed to win, but it was it was a large percentage for us to get that star. We need so to win there has 42. been a lot of pressure on people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of pressure on people to and again for it's it's all self-inflicted but it's one of these pieces of like i typically run rebels as as those ships because i would like to run them both Mm -hmm. and i and i'm frankly i'm more comfortable with rebels but i lost rebels in the last round so i'm like do i do i run rebels do i not run rebels what do i do i don't want to be the person that actually drops this so it's yeah it's uh it's nice having a little bit of a challenge in lstv for for once so yeah i ran uh rebels i think in phase two where you had the uh cm and the special yep. mission mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and i ran rebels this time and like beat it for the first time i was like so excited yeah because now my like, yeah. rebels team yeah. is up I, st- I i still need i think to get akbar a little bit faster i'm not sure like taking him to relic three will make that big of a difference but i i feel like that team just might need an extra little nudge i've also been thinking about um because uh the executor sits at like 190 four which is also exactly where my millennium falcon is and so oh. i thought if i take my bigs up or my biston u-wing up to 196 and then my millennium falcon up to 195 i won't have to rely on a coin flip just maybe if yeah. i'm using that in the executor counter um it hasn't really come 
up, but uh, I mean, I guess I lost one recently. I mean, I dropped it after killing a couple ships. I just like lost my momentum on the rebels. I mean, so I don't know if like, you know, uh, Akbar jumping in a little bit faster might help that. Uh, so I don't know, but uh, yeah, I just, oh God, I, I got so excited when I saw someone put the triple offense executor in GA. Yeah. So. Um, and that oh, worked out. Right. I actually saw it twice. So I got to take it on one time and it was just a steamroll. And then the second time I basically just uh, got really far. So it was an easy cleanup, but, uh, but they just dropped the one battle like towards the end. Yeah. So, um, I, so I think... you guys talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the 88% on download on one of the fights in grand <laughs> with, uh, with <laughs> it's it's like, I'm like, Oh, it's going to work. And then, and then the they wipe me download off the board, I've so ever got... I didn't get there. So <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. keep trying you'll get there someday yeah, uh, yeah lastly i wanted to kind of say how exciting it is that we're on the, the finally like i feel like they've understood a little bit of the timing we're on break for ga and mm-hmm. t and we have like conquest and tb going right now so i mean it's kind of nice yeah. to at least like with this startup of tb so you at least get like those first couple phases no ga i mean like because i you know like yeah. i think it was like tuesday i woke up and i was just like Boy, it's like I'm waking up like relieved. Like, what is this? It's like, oh yeah, I don't have to like worry about completing my GA by two o'clock. Like, yeah. but it's so nice. Like, because sometimes there's just that little bit of, uh, you know, uh, anxiety about getting it done, or you know, whether I know I'm going to get the win. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, yeah, I agree. It, it's necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I also appreciate the conquest is back to starting on Monday because yeah. I, I I can't t- like how many times you like you hit the the monday so it starts on a wednesday so that monday and you realize like i'm only in sector four and i'm at the start of week two like and you start panicking you're like oh no no that's right i'm only really four days in like it's, mm-hmm. I, i'm not i'm not seven days in at this point so mm-hmm. i i selfishly am also happy about it because my days off work are monday tuesday wednesday so i can just <laughs> go ham on conquest right away mm-hmm. uh right. And yeah, I don't know. It, it's so funny. Like when you get into, and this is the thing that I realized when I was on vacation too, but you get into such a routine, like I'm in such a routine with this game and how I manage mm-hmm. my yeah. dailies and like the guild events and all this stuff that as soon as you, you throw a wrench in it, whether like you move conquest to Wednesday, I'm like, what, what do you know? What are you doing? I can't function. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Pico, I did want to ask you like about how many days now do you finish conquest so that you can free up X amount of days for just like specifically farming? I guess my question more yeah. succinctly would be, have you moved up the day in which you finish conquest so that you have more time to farm uh, data crime stuff? So I'll, I'll answer it a little differently. Yeah. Um, I am... I'm essentially completing a sect. I'm getting to the end of a sector every day is, is kind of my goal. So mm-hmm. we're finishing up day three, right. Mm-hmm. Of, of conquest. Yeah. I am halfway through sector four. So okay. I will be through sector four tomorrow. Um, hopefully if this works out the way that I'm expecting, I'll be done with sector five, no later than Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. so that would give me the rest of that time of everything else that i'll do from that point forward will be banging on 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 those on those nodes i think before you said you'd always try to finish it in five days like all feats just so you didn't have to deal with it anymore but now it sounds like you're kind of still around that five day period but you'll just continue getting getting through and it was probably closer to six or seven is is kind of where where i where i landed those what what's different is um i would not move on to the next section until right yeah. I finished everything. That's in, what you're saying. A zone. Yeah. It's it's more. I'm. I, my big rush is to get through sector four, because sector four has got that really good datacron node, and mm-hmm. and that's where I want to work on some of the global feats. Is in sector four more so than than mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I th- this is this is really this is weird for me. Not now. The way that I'm going about it is, so I finished sector one. I'm now going back. And so when I, you know, I, I have some of my energy I dedicate to pushing forward. Some of it I dedicate to, to closing off uh, those pieces. So I'll, 
I'll finish two, but where normally I've finished two before I'm moving into three, you know, I'll, I'll now go back and start working on node two with, with, I typically end up dedicating maybe one or two refreshes to retro feats, you know, one or two to push forward. And then I, right now, because of the old Republic Sith and the, the three global feats, um, I typically do one or two refreshes there as well. So, um, okay. yeah, a yep. little bit more flexibility because it's six refreshes, but uh, mm-hmm. that, that's kind of how I'm going about it right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, Heinze was saying that he is finishing Conquest in two days now. And oh, spending wow. the other 12 doing, he's going like so hard on Datacrons. Yeah. Like, like, and so then he's, yeah, using it so he can use the rest of that time for farming. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just that's an, like two days. Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> right. It's like a part time job for those two days, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Is, yeah. The, the nice part of farming Datacrons, and I put this in, in Discord, you know, I, I, uh, to make sure that I actually got to the gym this morning and tipping instead because I like to do the stuff in the morning. I'm on the treadmill, just running an auto battle and put the phone down, run an auto right. battle and put the phone down, run the auto battle. And um, yeah. So I was the same. I used to love like doing like heading to the gym before I needed to do like my arena matches or something. Yeah. Cause I could just like get, be getting like my workout in and then like I nothing I'm yeah. focused, you know? So like I I'm getting those knocked out and stuff. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> But yeah, since COVID stopped, I uh, no longer go to the gym or anything. Actually, it's funny. So I, I, I run my neighborhood now. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just run in the neighborhood instead of that's my treadmill. And uh, we were, of course, doing our cam missions and stuff. And I'm our, the coach for my guild. And so I was like on a run and like I got tagged to do the coach coaching. And so like I'm just like running my like three miles for the day and like being <laughs> like, okay, like this is what to do next. Like running with my phone and stuff, <laughs> doing a little multitasking uh, there, which is kind of fun. So these things yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a fun I, run. If yeah. I tried that, it would be <gasps> hit. Right. right. <laughs> yes, it was. There was definitely some of that. I had to stop a couple of times. Yeah, well, it's hard too because it's like, okay, let me, like, I have to pay attention to what this opening yeah. is, right? So, like, let me stop or walk, like, for the opening and, yeah. you know, just trying to, like, you know, run for a little bit and then have to stop and be like, okay, wait, 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 what is happening right now? Like, we are in a situation. What's our mood? <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, difficult, but also fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Well, guys, you know, uh, we're, we've only covered two hours. So I'm sad <laughs> to say that we have to vamp here for another hour. Uh, I wish I could say we had a choice here, but uh, <laughs> three hours is the minimum this podcast runs now. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, 